Hey, everybody, this is Matt George, host of the Locked on Kings podcast. Before we start tonight's show, I do want to apologize about the audio quality, especially at the beginning of this podcast, the mic crackling a little bit. Uh, it's been an audio issue that I've been working on here at home, trying to figure out it reared its ugly head here again in this first podcast. I promise if you can kind of fight your way through it the first few minutes, it does clear up. Apologies about that. Hope you still will enjoy the show. Well, it hasn't been very pretty, but the Sacramento Kings are three and two to start the season, a perfect three and zero oh on the road. They defeat the Pelicans in New Orleans, but overall, if I'm being honest, it's a pretty unimpressive win. After a win, I would expect there to be more positives than negatives. That's not really the case on today's pod, but don't you worry, still some positives to point out. In the end, the Kings are moving in the right direction. Let's talk about it on today's Locked on Kings podcast. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game -game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through to December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been a Sacramento sports media member, Sacramento Kings media member for the last seven years. This is my eighth season covering the Kings, formerly with Sports 1140 KHDK Radio in Sacramento, now with ABC 10 Television. Normally, I like to be an optimist. Normally, I like to be positive. And don't worry, we're going to start with some positivity with this Kings win. The fact that the Kings are over 500, 3 and 2. We're going to talk about all of that. It's not going to be a Debbie Downer episode. But for the majority of this Kings game, this Kings win over the New Orleans Pelicans, I found myself just being unimpressed and Maybe concerned isn't the right word, but there were still some plenty rather of ugly things about this game from the Kings perspective that weren't making me the happiest, let's say. But you know what does make me happy is the fact that the Kings still looking ugly and playing ugly for a lot of the time. They still won 113 to 109, the final score. And before we dive in to the negatives, we will talk about the positives of this unimpressive victory. Um, the first one that jumps off the page to me is how Tyrese Halliburton and Rashawn Holmes played uh, together in the fourth quarter. Now, Tyrese, arguably the biggest criticism that Tyrese has faced in his entire career, and he's talked about this has been a criticism of his uh, going back into college and high school. Sometimes he's not aggressive enough. Like we know he's a pass first point guard. Uh, we know he's someone who likes to get his teammates involved and he's always trying to make the right smart play. He has an incredibly high basketball IQ, but sometimes the right play and the smart play are two very different things. And we've seen Tyrese in the past, maybe pass up a, a good look for potentially a better one, but it doesn't always result in a better one. Uh, we've seen Tyrese not be as aggressive uh, executing on mismatches. The Kings need scoring from Tyrese Halliburton, especially in the fourth quarter where offensively they've been struggling for much of this season. And he stepped up nicely in the fourth quarter. It wasn't just him scoring though. It was his two man game with Rashawn Holmes. And you're going to hear both Tyrese and Rashawn Holmes talk about their relationship with one another, the two man game that they've developed. Cause the two of them uh, gave the Pelicans fits in the fourth quarter. There was like three or four straight possessions of, of just Halliburton Holmes pick and rolls that either resulted in a mid range jumper for Halliburton, a floater for Halliburton. He really had his floater going tonight or alley oop opportunities for Rashawn Holmes. Tyrese finished with 17 points on uh, 12 or seven of 12 shooting one of two from three point range, an extremely efficient night offensively for him. Also eight assists uh, and a blocked shot. So a very impressive stat line for Tyrese and a great stat line, of course, for Rashawn Holmes too, who also played just under 32 minutes. He finished with 21 points, uh, extremely efficient, seven of eight from the field. His field goal percentage continues to be towards the top of the league. An even better seven of seven from the free throw line also had six rebounds. That rebound number you'd like to see higher, but he was battling with the big man that is Jonas Valanciunas, who really was the Pelican that gave the Kings the most trouble uh, in this game. He also had an assist for Sean Holmes, uh, one block shot. 
uh, and four personal fouls. The last couple of games, he's done a really good job staying out of foul trouble. Uh, I asked him about that as well that you're going to hear uh, in a couple of uh, segments here. But Rashawn Holmes and Tyrese, the two-man play between them was really the, the difference in the Kings being able to hold on to this lead uh, and secure this lead. But overall, it was a very big team win. I named two of the five Kings players uh, who finished in double figures, scoring four out of five starters, finished in double figures. Harrison Barnes had 18, De'Aaron Fox had 23, and it was another one of those nights where it's like, I know I can get more out of De'Aaron. De'Aaron didn't look his greatest. He shot 21 shots, only made nine of them. So he still hasn't looked like himself offensively, but he still gets 23 points. It wasn't a great game for him, but it was another good game. Also had seven rebounds, five assists. Uh, he did turn the ball over four times, though, some careless turnovers, but two to open up the game. Uh, but Fox, a little bit better. Good enough for the Kings to win. Still not at the level that we expect from De'Aaron. And then off the bench, Buddy Heald had another solid night. 20 points off the bench in 30 minutes. Shot 6 of 11 from three or from the field. 3 of 7 from 3-point range. A perfect 5 of 5 from the free throw line. The Kings tonight at the line were very, very efficient. They got to the line 25 times, knocked down 24 of them for 96%. That is excellent. The majority of the time, when you do that, you are going to win. Uh, this game is no different. Sacramento did turn the ball over 14 times, though New Orleans scored 21 points off of those 14 turnovers, and that's the difference in this game here. You you limit those turnovers and those points off turnovers. This is probably a pretty significant victory for the Kings. And again, we're going to get into the negatives a little bit later, but turnovers throughout this entire season have really plagued the Kings. If they controlled their turnover numbers, uh, they could very well be 4-1 and one or 5-0. and oh. Uh, so far this season, but uh, the Kings did end the first half on 11 to 0 run, uh, which created enough separation to give them a pretty decent halftime lead. The third quarter, though, got ugly. We will get into that. Uh, Harrison Barnes, another great game for him, a double double off of the bench, or rather in the starting lineup, excuse me, uh, 18 points, 12 rebounds for him, a couple of assists. He went five of nine. Uh, from the field, two of three from three-point range coming off of his game winner in Phoenix. Overall, good team win for the Kings. And they, in the end, they beat a team in the New Orleans Pelicans that they had to beat. Now, some people were calling this a must-win game. I have a hard time calling game five of the season must-win. But to some extent, I understood it, right? Because the Kings are coming into a game against a team that's in a similar tier or similar group uh, to them in the Western Conference. It's that team that's on the cusp going to be battling for the play-in. I fully expect the New Orleans Pelicans, even though they're now 1-5 and five on the season, I expect them to be in that mix uh, for one of the teams to, to earn a play-in spot. So these games, even at the very, very beginning of the season, are incredibly important, whether it's tiebreaker um, situation or just creating enough separation to not have to worry about a team like New Orleans. Every single one of these wins over the other counts uh, when all is said and done in the standings. So don't be surprised if we're looking at the standings towards the end of the season around that play in time and we're looking back to this game and going, that was a big win by the Sacramento Kings or that win by the Kings really gave them an edge and maybe so much of an edge that it's part of why New Orleans is not able to catch up to the Kings or maybe it plays a factor in a tiebreaker. Now the Kings and Pelicans play in Sacramento uh, later on this coming week. Uh, so right then it's, it's back to work for the Kings. And while uh, this Pelicans team is hurt, while they're missing Zion, you have to capitalize on these games. The Kings absolutely had to win this game. I guess if I'm saying that, then I guess that makes it a must win. So I guess I agree with those people, but they had to win. They needed to win this game. It was a good test for them because one of the biggest issues for this Kings team over this entire playoff drought has been them playing to the level of their competition. And uh, if the Kings had played with the energy and intensity that they played against the, the Utah Jazz with for three quarters or the Golden State Warriors for three quarters. I think the Kings win this game by double digits pretty easily. So still the energy wasn't quite there and the intensity could have been better. But overall, the Kings, we know they like to show up against teams that are better than them and try and defeat them. But sometimes when it comes to teams that are either on their level or below them, the Kings coast a little bit uh, and they get caught napping for it and oftentimes drop those games. So it was good to see them secure this win uh, against a shorthanded New Orleans Pelicans team. But those are the positives. We do have to get to the negatives. And unfortunately, I have my fair share of negatives in this one. If you want to send me your positives and negatives, please do that. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Matt George Sack. You can email me Matt George Sports at gmail.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube, uh, leave your comments down in the comment section down below. Also, later in the pod, you're going to hear from Tyrese Halliburton, Rashawn Holmes, and Sacramento Kings head coach Luke Walton. That is all 
all coming up. Right now, though, I want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Rock Auto. Rock Auto uh, is the absolute best place to get all of your auto parts, uh, solve all your auto parts needs, and it's excellent for people like myself who know nothing about cars. Why would you go to your local chain auto parts store and go through one intimidating or or honestly scary questioning when they start using all these big mechanical terms and you're just looking at them like a deer in the headlights? At least that's what happens to me. Maybe I'm a loser and I'm on an island there. I have no idea what they're talking about half the time and sometimes order the wrong thing or are priced into something that I don't need. But most of the time, these chain stores, they just have one part at one set price, one brand, and there's nothing you can really do about it. That's not the case at Rock Auto. They have a multitude of brands, different parts, different price points, and they're better than what you're going to get at your chain store. Why would you spend 30, 50, or even 100% more at your chain store when you can save that money on Rock Auto? They have everything you need, brake parts, tail uh, lights, motor oil, new carpet for your car. They have it all. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts need. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Locked On Kings is also brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Hey, maybe you won some money on this Kings win over the Pelicans tonight. If you did, let me know. They're back in better than ever for basketball, for football, for the World Series. They have it all. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football betting action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile uh, website to sign up today. You'll receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do is use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. It's free money for you to play with. From basketball to football, baseball postseason, NHL hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Do not wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Yes, it is possible for there to be more negatives than positives in a win. We saw it tonight. Not a lot more, but overall, I watched this Kings game and from start to finish, I was unimpressed. And maybe I had too high of expectations coming into this game for the Sacramento Kings. Maybe it had to do with how well De'Aaron Fox has performed against the Pelicans. Last season, Fox averaged almost 42 points a game against the New Orleans Pelicans. He did not even come close to that number tonight. Obviously, very different team for the Kings from last season uh, to this season. So the context is different. But looking at this game, the expectations that I had, this is a game that the Kings should win. They did but it's how they won. It's how this game was played. It's the still questionable energy that this Kings team played with in this game that still has me a little bit bothered. You know, I mentioned last segment, if the Kings had played with the energy and intensity that they played against the Utah Jazz for at least three quarters, or they played against the Golden State Warriors at home for at least three quarters, or even the first half of the Portland Trailblazers game, Had they played that way, or the third quarter of the Phoenix Suns game, had they played that way for half of this game, I think this is a a double-digit win. Had they played that way for three quarters of this game, it's definitely a double-digit win. But once again, this team, even though they got off to a better start, certainly, than they did against the Phoenix Suns, they just seemed slow. They just seemed disinterested. And it wasn't so much what the Pelicans are doing to them because the Pelicans do have good pieces. Brandon Ingram got off to a pretty solid start offensively. He scored like the first few buckets uh, for the Pelicans, ended up with just 22 points, but took 22 shots to get it. So not the greatest game for him. Jonas Valanciunas had a very solid game as well with his uh, 24 points on 10 of 14 shooting and 13 rebounds, also a couple of blocked shots. So those two guys were pretty good and other Pelicans stepped up with them being shorthanded, but it wasn't anything the Pelicans really were doing to the Kings. It just, it was continued self inflicted wounds. I talked about uh, the the turnover numbers for the Kings, 14 more turnovers, 21 points. I would say eight or nine of those 14 turnovers were careless, were unforced. The Kings opened this game with an unforced De'Aaron Fox turnover. Then the next possession, De'Aaron Fox hit a three. Then the next possession, Fox turned the ball over again. Not to put it all on De'Aaron, that's just a an example right at the very beginning of the game of how this team continues to, to have these unforced errors, which to me suggests a lack of focus, a lack of of intensity. And this is something that has plagued the Kings throughout all five of these games so far this season and something that is going to need to be cleaned up. Now, the fact that they've had this consistent issue and they're three and two, 
arguably could be four and one or even five and oh, had a chance to be five and oh, like that's a win in itself, which I could be excited about that and say, yes, that's like when this team does get it, when they do a better job taking care of the basketball, that's when uh, they're, they're really going to be at their absolute peak. If, if they're three and two struggling right now, imagine what they could be uh, if they're playing well together. But I just don't know if this Kings team is ever going to reach that point. The closest that we saw really was the fourth quarter uh, in Phoenix the other night, at least offensively, with multiple players uh, scoring. And in this game as well, the Kings getting five different play players in double figure scoring. But closing out games in all three of these Kings wins, all five of them for sure, all five games period, but in all three Kings wins, when the Kings have had the lead going into the final few minutes, they have been terrible. There's no other way to put it. The Kings have been terrible closing out games in the Portland win, in the Phoenix win, and in tonight's win against the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, out of the three, this New Orleans Pelicans was the best out of the three, and Luke Walton kind of will say that. You'll hear him say that uh, here towards the end of the podcast. But, I mean, you go back to the Portland win, where if Damian Lillard just decides to be Dame, Portland wins that game. He was 0 of 9 from three-point range, missed a lot of open looks, the open looks for Dame, that is, uh, in the fourth quarter. The Phoenix Suns game, it took a, a Hail Mary from Harrison Barnes to win that game. And then this game as well, the Kings had more than their fair share of opportunities to put the nail in the coffin, and they allowed the Pelicans to battle back to where the final score is just a four-point gap between the two teams. The Kings were outscored 37 to 36 in the fourth quarter. That's not horrible. It's only a one-point differential but they still gave up 37 points in the fourth quarter when a little bit of defense that they had had for the majority of this game, a little bit of defense secures this game midway through the quarter. The Kings have been really, really bad at taking care of the basketball, really bad at closing out wins. Those have been two of the biggest issues that I've seen. Physicality has been another issue, but I would say physicality in this game for the most part wasn't an issue. When you're battling someone like Jonas Valanciunas, if you're not playing physical enough, you're going to get exposed immediately. And I thought Alex Len coming in off the bench was really good physically. I thought Rashawn Holmes did a nice job being significantly undersized uh, compared to uh, Jonas Valanciunas. I thought he did a nice job. Physicality wasn't really lacking for this Kings team. It was just mental mistakes. Uh, in, in in crucial junctures, the fact that the Kings only scored 18 points offensively in the third quarter, especially after they closed out the second quarter on 11 to nothing run, that cannot happen. I don't care who you're facing, but especially taking on a Pelican team who's not known for their defense and is shorthanded. 18 points in the third quarter, that to me suggests an issue for this Kings team over the last few years. Really an issue for this Kings team since Luke Walton has been their head coach, which is a lack of adjustments at halftime. Now, they did make good halftime adjustments against the Phoenix Suns the other night, and that's the reason why they won the game. But this game in particular, in most games, we see the Kings come out of halftime maybe a bit slow, a bit lethargic, and they get punched in the mouth for it. 18 points for how good this Kings team is offensively. 18 points, especially in the game where they shoot 50% from the field in a third quarter against this Pelicans team. That is truly inexcusable. And like I said, honestly, I think if the Pels had Zion and were at full strength, this might have been a loss. The way the Kings played, maybe the Kings play better if Zion is in this game because maybe they have more reason to show up in battle. I don't know with this Kings team, but if this is if you take a screenshot of how this game was played, but you insert Zion into the game for the Pelicans, I think the Pelicans win this game. Uh, overall, the Kings do get the win. So it's really not the end of the world. But like I just pointed out there, uh, my fair share of negatives, my fair share of concerns that do need to be cleaned up, I believe will be cleaned up to some extent, but you want to see that happen sooner rather than later. But all, in the end, it doesn't matter because the Kings are three and two. They got the win. You can nitpick anything, but it's overall more positive than a negative because the Kings were able to win this game. And I'm very interested to see if the Kings correct these mistakes, how differently they look and how differently the Pelicans look when these two teams meet again uh, next week in Sacramento. So again, how are you feeling about the positives and negatives from this game? Are you just thrilled the Kings are three and two and got the win on the road? Are you thrilled that they're undefeated on the road? Or are you like me watching this game still a little bit nervous and concerned and overall unimpressed uh, with this Kings victory? Let me know. And again, I don't want to get too spoiled here because we're talking about a Kings team that has struggled winning and hasn't made the playoffs for 15 years. So you'd think we'd just take any win at this point. And to some extent we do. 
Uh, but this one definitely, definitely wasn't the prettiest. Some things definitely to be nitpicky about. So you can send those to me at Matt George Sack on Twitter. Email me, Matt George Sports at gmail.com. Uh, or feel free to leave your comments down in the comment section down below on YouTube. We are going to hear from uh, Luke Walton from Tyrese Halliburton and Rashawn Holmes. Coming up next right now, though, I want to let you know today's podcast brought to you by Postmates. I love Postmates. Postmates has helped my family out a ton, especially since my baby has been born. Some nights I just don't have time to make dinner or make lunch or the time gets away from me because I'm spending so much time uh, trying to take care of the baby while also planning to record a podcast while also still going to work. And my wife still has her needs as well. Sometimes we just don't have the time and Postmates bails us out because it can go uh, get our favorite food, whether it's like Jamba Juice for me, Starbucks for my wife. Uh, you can go get like Chick-fil-A sandwiches, which we absolutely love. Postmates delivers from all over our area. Great prices. I get all my favorite foods from local restaurants in my neighborhood delivered. I don't have to leave the house. And even better, I don't even have to get in the car and especially don't have to find a parking spot. I love that part. Postmates isn't just all about burritos and chicken sandwiches and sushi. I can order also things like toothpaste and phone chargers on demand too. I ordered batteries on Postmates to be brought to me because my baby has an automatic uh, electric rocker swing thing that puts him to sleep the batteries died on that thing and for a day we didn't have that we struggled putting him to bed postmates was my life savior there the best part is that the app lets me know that my food or items have been delivered everything is right outside my door it's great it never gets old no contact as well uh, in these uh, still covid times for a limited time postmates is giving just our listeners a little something special new customers will get 50 percent off your first five orders of 50 dollars or more when you use promo code locked on nba that's promo code locked on nba to get 50 percent off your first five orders of 50 dollars or more max save savings of $100 per order. Just download the Postmates app or sign up online. It's super easy. Offer is subject to change and taxes and fees to apply. Offer valid for 30 days after you add the promo code to your account. The Locked On Kings podcast also brought to you by our friends at Sweatblock, great sponsors of the entire Locked On podcast network, the antiperspirant wipes that work better than anything on the market. I use them uh, and I just had to use a new one today, but you know what that means? I'm taken care of for up to the next seven days. One wipe handles it all and you can use it in a bunch of different areas. I'm not just talking about your armpits. Uh, you can use it for your chest, your back, your feet, your hands, and other places as well, if you know what I mean. Uh, they're doctor created, doctor recommended. And then they give you a dry shirt guarantee, meaning if sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you will get your money back. Check out all of their reviews, like 13,000 plus reviews on Amazon right now. You don't just have to take my word for it. You can go and read the amount of success stories of sweat block for chronic sweaters uh, on amazon.com. While you're at it, buy a box there. You can buy a box at your local CVS pharmacy, or you can do what I do which is buy off of sweatblock.com, use promo code locked on, save yourself 20%. Hey, every little dollar counts. Sweatblock is already very affordable. We made it even more affordable for you. Get rid of those sweat stains, get rid of the discomfort with Sweatblock. Here's Sacramento Kings head coach Luke Walton. Okay, uh, I'll start by saying, hey, another good road win. We're not never easy to win in this league, especially on the road. So, um, you know, proud of our group for fighting through it and finding finding a way to uh to pull out a, a another one and uh, look to keep building on the momentum as this road trip uh, carries on yeah luke that's the fifth straight game that you guys are in it in the fourth quarter and you're really grinding here how good is this experience for your team to get some success but also to be in these games where everything matters every single play matters yeah it, it's it's it, it means a lot to a group that's you know on the path that we're on and you know the reason it does you hear them talking timeouts at the end of these games and then they get to do it again the next night and you come in the locker room and you hear them in there not celebrating but talking about what we could have done different um and that's how you get growth uh from from a group so uh being in every game against the you know the type of teams we're playing is is exciting um but you know it's also what we expect and we know it's hard uh, what what we really like is that we've won three of the five. Um, so like we, uh, we we know that we put a lot of hard work in coming into the season and, and it's a small sample size and it's early, but we like uh, where our team's at. 
Hey, Luke, sorry to take it to a, a negative route, but Tyrese uh, Halliburton just talked about the unacceptable uh, close to, to both of these recent wins. And in all three wins so far this season, the, the final few minutes have, have been a bit rocky for your team, mixture of turnovers and missed shots, things of that nature. What are you seeing with these closeouts? The team trying to do a little bit too much? Is there anything specific that jumps off to you? Yeah, I, I mean, I know what Tyrese is saying, but it's, you know, I thought our team actually did a pretty good job tonight of, of keeping uh, arms distance from uh, from them. Uh, we made our free throws. Uh, we executed plays down the stretch, and it was really only that 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 you know final ninety seconds of um, of us getting to the. We got to the paint. That's what we're looking to do. And you know whether it was uh, you know we're trying to get to the foul line with De'Aaron, no call turns into a fast break to a pump fake, step in contested three, like. You know, I, I, I thought tonight's finish was overall finish was much cleaner than those other ones you're talking about. But look, at the end of the day, our guys are three and two. I like them that they're talking about. We have to be better because it's true. When You know, we, we got to be a lot better. Um, and we're in a good place. Hello, coach. First of all, great game. Great win. Uh, what kind of luxury for you as a team is to have a player like Buddy Hill coming off the bench and bring some uh, really impressive uh, game so far? About his scoring ability. Yeah, he's uh, you know he's 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 instant offense and instant energy, um, and he's done a, a a good job on the defensive end as well so far. As far as you know, uh, playing with that same type of effort and energy. The one thing about Buddy is he loves to win. It doesn't matter what you're doing if you're you know playing cards or playing basketball or practice or a shooting game. He's he's does it with uh with a, a lot of energy and he tries to win so uh he's been a uh, he's been he's been great for us Luke, congrats on the win sir um Thanks, you guys go 24 or 25 at the free throw line tonight which is you know uh, that's a better number than than we've seen from this team in a long long time i think um how how big of a difference does that make you look at this ends up being a four point game so not just tonight but Moving forward, you know, how crucial is it this team continues to get? Yeah, I mean, more? good teams normally shoot, uh, 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 you know, no one's going to shoot 96 for the season, but good teams shoot good percentages from the foul line. You know, you, you can, you know, you, you take care of your business and, and making free throws is something uh, that we talk a lot about as a team. Uh, our guys work, uh, work on and, you know, really was a big part of how, how we were able to keep that lead uh, in the fourth quarter was was every time we got fouled, knocking down free throws. So, uh, you know, that to me, that's one of those winning habits we talk about uh, that we're continuing to try to build on. And that's a that that's a big part of it. Hey, Luke, building off of uh, your comments on on Buddy Hill last season, he seemed to struggle with like smothering coverage. And, and this season, he seems to be doing a lot better at, at dribbling out of it and being able to put the ball on the floor and, and create for himself and create for others. Uh, can you speak to just his development as a, a ball handler and what you've seen and how that helps his and your game? Yeah, well, he's gotten better at it, um, but he knows and the whole team knows like when we're running actions, we have we have we have so many good playmakers and, and people that can handle, including, you know, Harrison at the four and when Moe's playing four to the, you know, the point guards and TD, like if we don't have something open, move it on to the next guy. So, yes, to answer your question, Matt, he is he's definitely getting better at that um, and he can create offense for us with that. But how we want to play is look, we want to get buddy. 15 three pointers a night, uh, but when they're not open, moving on. And when if Ty catches and he's not open, attack. And if that's not open, move it on. And that's for everyone on the team. Uh, you know, so at, later in the game, I don't mind slowing it down, letting De'Aaron pick on some mismatches, something like that. But uh, we're looking, we're we're looking to catch, shoot, drive, pass, quick decisions. These next two guys were extremely impactful for the Kings in the fourth quarter. First, Tyrese Halliburton, then Rashawn Holmes. Three wins in a row on the road. Um, what's going on with this team playing on the road the way they are to start the season? Uh, you know, I think we really had a, a you know, a, a great first five games. You know, we lost, we let two slip um, at home, but I think, you know, we've been playing well all year. Um, you know, right now we're just figuring out how to close games. You know, it's not acceptable the way we've finished the last two games. We've had to lead in both those, you know, contests down the stretch and, and let it slip and, had to fight to get it back. We just got to rent, you know, we're just figuring out how to finish games right now, but you know, it's unacceptable. We just got to be better down the stretch. 
Uh, yeah, Ty, just how, uh, how important is it to actually go through this process of battling all the way down the stretch and learning how to win these games? I mean, for us to take the next step, we just got to figure out how to win games. You know, a lot of, you know, the, the, the big games in the NBA come down the last five minutes. So, you know, we just got to figure out how to execute down the stretch and get stops and, uh, you know, take care of the ball. And, uh, you know, it's all part of the growth process. Hey, Tyrese, your two-man game, especially in the fourth quarter with yourself and Rashawn Holmes, we saw stretches of it last season as well. Can you talk about the relationship form with him and the confidence that you have in either throwing that lob up and what that does opening up the floater game for you? Um, you know, I think from the moment I got here, you know, we gained, we, uh, you know, a special relationship between us grew, um, you know, to where we can play off each other. And, you know, to be honest, I didn't know much about Rich uh, before I got here. And, um, you know, I quickly figured out that if I wanted an assist. It was, it was easy to play with Rich. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it worked for us a lot last year and uh, down the stretch, you know, I think uh, our teammates trust us in the, in the two-man game to make the right play. And, um, you know, I think we did that tonight. Hey, Ty, good win for you guys, man. Um, you know, at times you, you've, uh, as a team, struggled uh, at the free throw line uh, tonight, 24 out of 25. How big is that in this game and, and also moving forward for this team? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. Um, you know, to, we hit a lot of big free throws down the stretch, you know, Buddy and, and HB and Rich. And, um, you know, that helps us a lot. Um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be important in these, you know, as these games ramp up, the closer they are. Uh, a lot of times you look to things like, you know, rebounding uh, and, and free throws and turnovers and, and stats like that, uh, you know, are key indicators to winning or losing. So, um, you know, they're very important. Ty, I wanted to ask you about De'Aaron as well. Um, you know, struggling still with that shot a little bit. What do you make of, of what he's going through and what can you guys do as, as teammates to, to, you know, help him smooth things out a little bit? Uh, you know, it's basketball, you know, you just, you, you have times where you miss shots, have time where you make shots. Um, you know, he's just missing some jumpers right now, but he was huge for us tonight. I don't have a stat sheet in front of me or anything, but, um, you know, I thought he was a, a really good tonight, uh, making, you know, a lot of plays for others and, uh, getting downhill and, um, you know, it, it, it's just a game, you know, you're going to miss shots. You're going to make shots. That's, that's whatever. But, uh, you know, for us, it's just about winning and, uh, you know, he's our leader and he's helping us do that. Hey, Rashawn, uh, you guys have really been in a lot of close games already this season. Just, is this a good thing for your team to go through these, uh, these five games where you're battling all the way down the stretch and every play matters? I mean, I think it's, it's always good to be able to learn lessons while winning. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of things we got to improve on, especially in the fourth, you know, when it comes to offensive execution and things of that sort. But uh, you always want to learn these lessons while winning. And we're able to get another win on the road. You know, going to watch film tomorrow and just try to get better, try to get better from it. Hey, Rashawn, your two-man game with Tyrese was very apparent there in the fourth quarter, and we've seen that a number of times over the last couple of seasons. When he's throwing lobs to you, is there? Are, how are you guys communicating? Is there a look, a gesture? Are you saying something to him? Because it seems like it's 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 uh, a perfect communication line between the two of you. I mean, with Ty, he he's just so creative with the ball, especially when he gets downhill in the pick and roll. So for me, it's about just making sure I get space from him and give him room to operate. It's very, very simple for me. You know, he... Uh, knows how to make the right pass. He always makes the right decision. So he's just very, very tough to guard in the pick and roll. So when he's coming downhill, I try to get to the front of the rim and uh, let him make the decision. And he always makes the right one. Hey, Rich, good win. Congrats. Um, you guys have caused a lot of problems for really every every set of guards that you've seen so far this year. Um, what what are you seeing there? How How is it that, you know, that something that's been a weakness um, in years past here has, has seemingly become a little bit of a strength now? I think just the communication and effort, you know, it goes a long way. You know, just making sure we understand as bigs to call out screens early for our guards so they can get in positions they need to be in. A matter of the guards, you know, fixing their feet to get in positions they need to be in, you know, to go, on with our, go along with our defensive game plan. So I just think just the focus level uh, in that area, you know, this year has been much improved and uh, something that we continue to build, we're looking to continue to build on throughout the season. Sean, I know foul trouble is something that you've battled with and sometimes been frustrated with the calls going against you over the last few seasons. At least last two games, though, you've done a really good job of staying out of foul trouble. Have you done anything differently? Has your approach been different or just calls going your way finally, it seems? Um, I want to make sure I don't say nothing wrong. <laughs> My bad. Um, 
but I'm I'm an aggressive player. You know, uh, I play with a lot of energy, and you know, I just I, I feel like that could that could be seen, you know, in a negative light sometimes, you know. Uh, and so I just think, you know, about for me personally, it's about just focusing in on little nuances and things of that sort, getting to understand what referees I'm looking for, what I'm doing wrong, and I always like to put the onus on myself and just trying to avoid little. You know, ticky tack things where you know my effort kind of like, gets the better of me, my passion gets the better of me when you know it's 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 a, it's a play I have to let go. So it's just about learning, differentiating, and uh, just getting better in that aspect of the game. Yeah, Rashawn. Not again. Not to get you in trouble on that. Just how different is it this season with the uh, the rule changes? Because it feels like you know free throw shooting is way down. You guys shot twenty four, I think, tonight, but that was a lot because you guys were in crunch time getting fouled. But in the regular flow of the offense, it doesn't feel like there's nearly as many foul calls uh, on one uh, on especially the guards. Yeah, I, I honestly, um, you know, I know that's an emphasis that the league made this year. You know, different rules and that and that sort. And uh, you know, based on the reactions of the fans and players and things of that sort, it, it's been something to be enjoyed. You know, uh, getting a better flow to the game and things of that sort. And so uh, I think the NBA has done a great job with those rule changes. The uh, officials are doing a great job implementing them. And, uh, you know, it's going to be an adjustment period as we go forward. But uh, as we get, you know, throughout the season, I feel like it's something we can adjust to and uh, adjust to it will. Thank you so much for listening to today's Locked on Kings podcast. Remember to share your thoughts about this Kings two-game win streak, the Kings being 3-0 and on the road, even though this game was somewhat unimpressive. Send me your thoughts at Matt George Sack on Twitter. Email me, Sports at gmail.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube, the comment section down below is available for you. I read all of those mediums. Love to respond as much as I can. I appreciate your support. Appreciate you listening. If you could leave a review of Locked on Kings on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, I really would appreciate that. Hit five stars. There's a little box about what you like about the pod, any constructive criticism that you have, you can put it there. Why you would encourage others, Kings fans or just NBA fans to listen to the pod, put that there too. That really, really, truly makes a difference. I appreciate you listening. Can't wait to have you back with me. Uh, following Sunday's game, going to be an interesting matchup on Halloween, a spooky matchup between the Kings and the Dallas Mavericks, one of the teams that the Kings had a lot of success against last season. The Mavericks have been playing well, and I guarantee you they're going to want a little bit of revenge uh, for how they were were uh, manhandled by the Kings last year. Should be an interesting game. Will the Kings remain undefeated? We will find out undefeated on the road. We will find out. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to the Locked On Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.